God is good. Even on Tuesday night. <laughs> Thank you, Master. What a time to be alive. Galatians chapter 5. <laughs> Uh. Hey, in the spirit, there's no days. It's all one. <laughs> it's a glory day. <laughs> Galatians 5, 16. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Galatians 5, 16. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. I say what? Walk in the spirit, and you not, shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That should be bold. <laughs> Walk in the spirit. You know, many people are going, man, I just don't understand what's happening. I'm manifesting in the flesh because you ain't walking in the spirit. That's bottom line. If you're in the flesh, you're not in the spirit. Amen. He says, walk in the Spirit, so there's something that you must do. You must access the realm of the Spirit of God. You must press through to connect. If you're not a connector, you're not walking in the Spirit. If you're still about you, then you haven't touched the other side. If you can't do something because of how you feel, you're a mess. Hello? Why? You're allowing your feelings to distract you. You're allowing your feelings to make a decision. And God can't trust someone that relies on their feelings. You'll never earn the trust of God until you overcome your emotional decisions. Amen? See, when you're walking in the Spirit, emotions are nullified. When you're walking in the Spirit, you're nullified. It's just you and God. Now everything is about him. It's about him. It's about him. It's not about you. Your eyes are no longer on you. Your function is no longer about you. You're in the spirit. This is whether you know you're in the spirit or not. Amen? Hallelujah. Got a couple of green. Anyways. <laughs> Verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And this is the Spirit of God, not your spirit. Amen? And the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or you desire or you emotionally like. Hello. Is everybody okay? Good. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you're not under the law. The law of what? Condemnation, the law of death. You're either in the spirit or you're not. If you're not in the spirit, you're in the flesh. And you're no good to nobody in the flesh, especially yourself. Amen? We live a life in the spirit. That means he's before us in everything we do. We're not about ourselves. I don't make a decision about how I feel. I look for him to tell me what to do. See, many people walk in blind faith. They haven't known. I'm walking by faith. What did God tell you to do? it? No, I'm walking blind. Yeah, obviously. And that's how people get in trouble because they walk in assumption. Listen, God is tightening things up. He's looking for warriors to advance. Amen? To advance. But there's an area where you got to, again, number, the first thing I've shared before, if the, your priority is in his presence, there's something wrong with you. Amen? If you're not one that desires God's presence before anything, there's something wrong with you. You may call yourself a Christian. I can't. Because if you're a Christian, Christ, the Christ in you wants the Christ presence. Amen? Now, to, now remember, here's where the area of the divine nature, because the spirit is bound to your spirit, 
and the divine nature is being manifested. If you're maintaining that connection. Remember, the enemy fears you then. Other than that, people fear the enemy. They don't have dominion over things. That means their flesh and their emotions are more in control over their spirit, man, than the spirit is over them. That's called flesh. Everybody okay? So we want to walk in the spirit. Or you'll, so why? So you don't react to the flesh. So you don't react to the soulish realm. And, you know, people fall into fear, anxiety, stress, anxiousness, doubt, unbelief, mistrust, lust of self, and love of money. Which moves them right out of the spirit. Or never, or prevents them from ever getting in the spirit. See, the enemy always brings things to your remembrance to prevent you. This is where we are to focus on the things from above in the future. That's called mind over matter. As a man thinks, so he what? Is. So if you're in the spirit, you're not thinking about all the other foolishness. You're thinking about the things that are pleasing to God. You're always thinking about kingdom business. That's one thing that Jesus said when he was a young kid. I'm about my father's business. See, if you're not thinking about being about your father's business, then you're in the flesh. Everybody okay? Praise God. First Timothy 6. Hallelujah. Verse 9. First Timothy 6, 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But those who desire to be what? Rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you men and women of God flee these things. Pursue righteousness and godliness and faith, love and patience and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Very, very powerful. The love of money. Well, see, in the world, money is power. In the world. In the flesh, money is power to them. See, that's why I did desire money. Because I know that myself in the world... When I was in the world, I, was, I had a saying, first get the money, then you get the power. Why? Because people can get bait off. Because the world's God is money. You can get anything if you like, if you have enough money. You can buy people out. You can do whatever. You can pay your way through something, whatever. But God knows that. See, that's called an idol. Again, my, in the drug world, first you get the money, then you get the power. You get the power to what? To get to do whatever. You get away with things. Look at what's going on right now. That's the worldly way, isn't it? That's called the worldly way. So what are they doing? They live for themselves. The elite wealthy that are anti-Christ have plenty of money. Even our president said it. This battles because there's so many that have money they can buy out. Look at what the media is doing. They're bought out. Even fat Fox got snagged now. Their ratings and everything has gone down tremendously. So the love of money is the root of all evil in flesh, the promote of, of flesh. Amen. Not able to walk in the spirit of freedom because of the love of money. Love of money. Look, at, there's nothing wrong with having money. But we don't serve money. Money should serve you. Amen? 
We want to have faith in the Spirit. And, you know, if you're not in the Spirit, you're not in faith. You're in the flesh. Then you worry. Then you're trying to conjure up things in your mind. How can I get this? How can I get that? When you can't wait on God. Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. So you think it's important to live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit? Amen. And look at it. It's not about a feeling. And that doesn't mean you're going to have goosebumps all day and your, hands gonna, your hair is going to stand straight up. That doesn't mean you're going to have vision. You know? It means you're walking in peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It means you're not reacting. You're responding. It means your, your, your conduct is Christ-like. It means you're not making decisions according to how you feel or what you want. You're making decisions according to the will of God and His desire, not yours. There's been an exchange of heart, exchange of mind, and exchange of desire. It's no longer you but Him. So you live all the time. You get up in the morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. What do you want me to do? What can I do to please you today, Lord? And you start your, your routine. You get filled, dressed, and possessed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. So there's no condemnation. See, one of the things that when you're walking in the Spirit, let me tell you, you can make a mistake even if you're walking in the Spirit. As long as you don't stay in the mistake too long. You may make a mistake, but it doesn't mean you're out of the Spirit. You're perfect in Him, not in you. Amen? And that's a reality that comes to you when you're walking in the Spirit. Why? Because you are manifesting the righteousness of God. His righteousness, not ours. See, you can't, you try to become perfect yourself, you'll drive yourself nuts. You'll become granola, nutty and fruity. You people are trying to be perfect. You can't become perfect. You're perfect in Him, not you. Amen? That's how we walk in the Spirit. We're walking in His love, not lust. We know who we are. See, walking in the Spirit always maintains your identity. I'm a joiner of Christ. I'm the righteousness of God. If He's for me, who can be against me? Sometimes we take advantage of those things. You know, especially when you're pulled into a legal parking place and somebody comes out and yells at you and say, look, my father owns this place. Does everybody understand that? One day I was dropping this woman off and there was a wrong illegal parking there and, she, and her and her son, and they were coming, I was bringing them home from church. She goes, you can't park here. I said, look, my father owns this place. She looked at me, she goes, really? I said, sure, he owns everything. She got out, went in the house. I cracked up. I thought it was funny. I said, Dad, you own everything, right? He, he agreed. He owns it all. Hallelujah. So anyways, there's no condemnation if you're in the Spirit. But there is if you're in the flesh. That means the enemy has access to you. To attack you, to torment you. To mess with your mind. That means his voice is right there. See, in the spirit, they have to book. They're distant. If you're in the flesh, they're close. If you're in the spirit, they're distant. In other words, you know them around. Yeah, I hear you over there, homie. Okay. But you can't touch this. Do, 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 do. Amen. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Remember, anybody remember what is the law of the spirit? Spirit of life. Deny yourself. Hello. That is the first thing. That's why people don't get in the spirit, because they're still concerned about me, myself, and 
I and how I feel. They're still holding offense and unforgiveness. That means it's still there. They're still concerned. What will people think? Who cares? What about God thinks? When you get to the point where God, you know God knows it all, and you're more concerned about pleasing him than men, you're walking in the spirit. Amen? Oh, happy days. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement, and there is a requirement, of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So everything is fulfilled when you're in the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, and to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God who is not subject to the law of God nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh can't pe please God. You can't please God. You cannot please God in the flesh. It just doesn't work. No life in the Spirit. It's death. It's separation from God. And that's exactly where the enemy wants to get us. In the flesh. He brings you to you. Again, I want to say this again. Because so many people lose sight of it. When you're more focused on you, you're in the flesh. Has everybody got it? Psalm 92. Hallelujah. Psalm 92. There's an importance. Of, that's why you worship. You worship. <laughs> what prevents you from worshiping? You. What prevents you from connecting? You. You're your worst enemy. Amen? We are. But you don't know how I feel. Who cares? I don't care. Does God know how you feel? Yes. So surrender it, will you? Exchange it. But you don't know what I've been through. Praise God you've been through it. Are you still there? Well, then you're in the flesh. How do you get out? Get in the spirit. Amen? Amen? Listen, the powers of darkness have been disarmed. The only way that keeps them activated and disarmed is our decision and choices. What we agree with, what they say. The things we touch and agree with. The things we open our gates to. Amen? Psalm 92, verse 5. Let's speak it together. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do what? Flourish. It is that they may be destroyed forever. So, uh, come on, did, you understand? did you just hear that? So when the wicked prosper and grow big and flourish, what's it doing? It's exposing them. See, you're seeing this right now all over, especially in this country. You don't have to look beyond this country. It's happening right here big time. And verse 8, but you, Lord, are on high forevermore. For behold, your enemies, O Lord, for behold, your enemies shall perish. All workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I like that because what is he saying? It's called aggressive anointing. I've been anointed with what? Fresh oil. That's that new anointing that's coming, I'm telling you. My eye also has seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. 
Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. If you're planted in the house of the Lord, you're planted in God's presence. Unless you don't press in. Shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still what? Bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. The wicked will flourish, prosper, but God's going to eventually destroy. Why? Because money is their God. Amen? Money and power is their God. They seek for power to control mankind. Psalm 28. Psalm 28, 4 through 6. Psalm 28. Uh, let's see here. Psalm 28. Okay, let's start at verse 3. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their what? Deeds. And according to the wicked of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Because what? They do not what? Regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. But blessed be the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplications. Very powerful. Because they did not regard the working of God, what he's doing, he will destroy them. I'm sharing with you all of this because what's getting ready to happen. We're going to talk a little bit, go a little bit deeper tonight. But the world is lying. The, all the media and all the, they're under a lie. And many people have bitten the bait of lies and deception. And we talked about the deception already. In verse 37, in verse 3. Uh, Psalm 37, sorry. Psalm 37. What did I say, verse 37? Snap. Psalm 37, verse 3. We are in a time right now where you have to trust God. Not what the world says, not what your emotions say, and not what you see. You have to remember something because God's desire is all men be saved. Amen? Even the wicked. And hope that they turn from their wicked ways. We are about to enter the greatest harvest. I've shared already that this is God's sting operation to expose all of this. And that's what it is. And there's something very powerful that's about to happen. And Psalm 37, in verse 3, let's speak it together. Trust. Everyone say trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his what? Faithfulness. This is where we must be. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will what? I'll bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and do what? Wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, 
and do not fret. It only causes what? Causes harm. For evildoers will be what? Cut off. But those who what? Those who what? Wait on the Lord. They shall inherit the earth. Those who wait on the Lord. Let me share something with you. Trust is wait. We are at the wait. Everyone say the wait. Wait. What is really wait? It's willfully advanced into tr trust. We have willfully advanced into trusting. Amen? It's called wait. This is called the wait. We are at the wait right now. We are willfully advancing into trusting. Amen? It is a position. It is a place. It is a place only in the Spirit that you wait and you cannot be moved. Either God's going to come and move you, hello, or he's going to direct something for you to move. You wait no matter what. It doesn't matter what you see, what you hear, no matter what. You know God's promises and you are in a wait position. That's where we are right now. It's called the wait. It's called the teaching tonight. The wait. Everyone saw they, the wait. Hallelujah. The wait. Glory. Um, verse 10. For yet a little, a little while and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place. That's his position of authority. And it shall be what? No more. This is what's getting ready to happen. But we must wait. We battle in a wait position. We stay in the spirit in a wait position. Why? Because we're willfully what? Advanced into trust. Verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of what? Peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his what? Teeth. The Lord does what? La Let me tell you, when they self-elected Biden, the Lord laughed. I'm telling you, he probably fell off his chair. He laughed. They, they got, what does that say? Something, uh, something elect president? Would have? President elect. He's not even elected yet. He's not even qualified. Well, the only one that's elected is the media and the Democrats. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is what? Coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall what? Enter their own heart. Their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Listen, this is all going to come to pass. God has got a plan. Amen? We must trust. We must wait. We are waiting to do something. We are waiting to cross over. We're waiting to cross over. Amen? <laughs> we must stay in a place of immovable. We are willfully advanced into trust. That means you choice. You are trusting no matter what. Psalm 40. The wait. Psalm 40. Verse 1. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Tough crowd tonight. What's up? <laughs> Hallelujah! I'm excited. I did what? I waited what? I patient. That means endured. I waited patiently for the Lord. You know, there isn't too many people that can wait. If you're not in the spirit, you cannot wait. You can't sit still. 
you got to do something. I got to do something. Chain yourself up, man. Wait. <laughs> I waited patiently for the Lord, and he did what? He inclined me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of what? A horrible pit. Why? Because they waited. They endured. He came to get them. They didn't try to get themselves out. Out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Glory. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who what? Makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Wow. He waited. He endured. He was immovable. He was steadfast. Again, we are currently in the wait right now. Listen, we just completed Red October. Think about Red October. Anybody ever seen that movie about Red October? And, and, and it's about a, a submarine captain that took one of the high-technology submarines who was a Russian captain, and he defected and came to America. Red October. We just passed Red October where many have defected from blue coming to red. So everybody got it? This is prophetically released. It was said already that we would enter Red October. We did. Why? Because many... Blue defected and came to red. Does everybody understand it? And they're now on TV promoting. These are Democrats that hold seats and positions of political, and they're coming against their own party and promoting righteousness and justice. They're trying to come out of it now. So we see that we just completed Red October, where many defected from blue to red, creating a sea of red. Many people. Does everybody get it? Now we are at the Red Sea. Everybody got it? Now we're where? Red Sea. Yes. November is now the place where we are at the Red Sea, waiting on God to do what? Cross over. You know, the Egyptians, which we see right now, that there's no different. They were just seed of the serpent, Nephilim race. Amen? Pharaoh, they chased the Jews, they held them captive for 400 years. And we see that all the plagues came, right? With the Egyptians, the elects, the, uh, the elites right now, the children, what was going on? Child sacrifice. Listen, when, they, when, uh, when the Egyptians, through Moses, when they finally, I mean, when the uh, Hebrews finally were released, the exodus, again, there was an exit, a wave escape. When they left Egypt, you know what they left with? The cash, the gold and silver. Amen? And you know what? Everybody was healed. There was nobody sick. Listen, we're about to see the wealth of the wicked be turned over to the righteous. All of this is we're waiting to cross over at the roads. Remember, the the uh, Egyptian army was chasing them. They had nowhere to go. They couldn't cross. The, they, they couldn't jump into the sea and die. They had to do what? They had to wait. They had to put themselves in a willful advance into what? Trust. They had to make that choice. Now, speaking of the plagues, I just want you to know in 2020, we've had the plagues. As for Moses. We've had so many plagues. May 18th, uh, Israel. I mean, there's so many things that have gone on. I mean, I begin to look this stuff up. I'm like, oh, my God. You wouldn't believe how many rivers and freshwater places have turned to blood all over, the, all over the world. All over the world. Where the animals wouldn't go in the water. People couldn't drink because they were red. It was blood. Red blood all over the world. And I'm going to give you a couple places. Israel. Um, China, India, Turkey, Australia, Canada, Chile. 20 million fish came up, died. Birds falling from air, from the air. All of these things, whales coming up. 
all kinds of things that are happening all over the place. Frogs. In England, and in some of the English towns, it was invaded by frogs. Look at the locusts. Does anybody remember the locusts? You've seen it all over the news. It was in Kenya, uh, Ethiopia, Uganda, Somalia, India, Pakistan, Iran, Yemen, uh, Amman, Saudi Arabia. All of these places were invaded with locusts. I mean, you don't see that on the news because they don't want you to know that these are the plagues of Moses. Look at all the fires, all the, all the hailstorms. Amen. <laughs> Look at all the earthquakes that have happened. We just had another one in, uh, what was it, uh, Wisconsin or something like that? Or, yeah, just, just this last Friday. Fire, hail, boils, earthquakes. How about pestilence called COVID-19? That was a worldwide epidemic, wasn't it? It was the time of Moses to exit the control of Pharaoh, Egyptian, fallen angel race, Nephilim, amen? The elite, wealthy, money-hungry, child-sacrificing regime, regimes of all political, law enforcement, medical, education, media, anti-Christ, anti-Trump, into a land of justice and righteousness. This is what we're waiting to cross over. We are now at the Red Sea. Why? Okay, we look at the Red Sea. I'm, just, I'm talking about the Red Sea because there's so many red People have turned from blue to red. Why? Because they want justice and righteousness. They've seen the corruption and understand the world has been controlled by demonic forces. Everybody okay? Isaiah 19. Glory. Isaiah 19, 1 through 4. The burden against Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and will come into what? Egypt. The idols of Egypt will totter at his presence. And the heart of Egypt will melt in its mist. I will set Egyptians against Egyptians. Everyone will fight against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt will fail in its midst. I will destroy their council, and they will consult with idols and charmers, mediums, and the sorcerers. Listen, this is what the blue does. And the Egyptians I will give into the hand of a cruel master. And a fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the army. Well, in other words, what's going to happen? He's going to dismantle all the bondage of corruption and all those involved that are promoting it. It will be dismantled. Go to Exodus 14. Hallelujah. So where are we at? We are at the Red Sea. And what are we in? A wait position. Exodus 14. Verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before pi Harath, between Migdal and the sea opposite Baal, Zephon, you shall camp before it by the sea. Now, this place, Baal, was a place of sacrifice of children. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land, and the wilderness has closed them in. In other words, because they were in front of the Red Sea, and they couldn't return back. 
because the Egyptian army was coming against them. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all of his army that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and they did so. I'm telling you, God is about to do something powerful to let the world know he is God. Now, it was told to the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also, he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of, the, of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Phi, uh, Pi Hathroth before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? This is called complaining. This is not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. This is called complaining. There's no trust and no faith. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still. Basically, shut up. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see again no more forever. So, Moses released a prophetic word to stop them from complaining and grumbling. See, God doesn't move under complaining and grumbling. He stops. He waits. Because are they in the Spirit? No, He doesn't move on the Spirit. Uh, only when you're in the Spirit. He doesn't move according to the flesh. He doesn't move according to your grumbling and complaining. He will not. So He waited till they shut up. And you know what they got to do? They had to go into the wait. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, let's see where we are now. Moses. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's go to 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still. See salvation of the Lord, which he is, will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more then the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your what you shall hold your what again shut up <laughs> quit complaining god doesn't move on your complaints he'll wait for you to stop and trust him get in the spirit where faith is at and the lord said to moses why do you cry to me tell the children of israel to go forward but lift your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all of his army, his chariots and, ho and horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I, am, when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went before them and stood behind them. So it came between the camp and the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other at all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back. By a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground 
and the waters were a wall in them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels. Come on, man. God set them up. He took off. He stole their tires. So that it, it drove them it, with, with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. You'd think they would get it then. These guys are not. How are you going to get it going, you know, chase them? They'd be dragging their chariots. And I'm sure there wasn't any tire places around there or any wheel places. Amen? Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians. Ooh. <clears throat> and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. You know, I, I really, it's not that Moses stretched out his, hand, his, his rod and the sea just split. God split the sea. Amen. He came and opened it up himself. He came right to Moses from Taman, right across. Opened the sea for Moses. As Moses stretched out the rod, the Lord came right to him, opened it all up. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Man, what you got to go through for people to believe. Sheesh. We need to start splitting streets, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Isaiah 40. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? We are in the wait. Glory. Isaiah forty. 27, verse 27. Again, the only way you stay in the weight is in the Spirit. Verse 27, let's speak it together. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of all the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But those who do what? Do what? Those that are in the weight. On the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. I'm telling you, that's that aggressive anointing that's going to be released. Amen. We're going to close at Psalm 27.
Psalm 27. Verse 11, 27, 11. Hallelujah. You know, again, it goes back to he's going to have the last say. <laughs> And nobody escapes. Nobody. And when we want to be well pleasing to him, we want to stay in that weight, that position, not be moved, steadfast, know that he's about to do something. He's going to come, he's going to make a way to cross over. Amen. We are going to enter a whole new arena. Or this land will be ruled by justice and righteousness for a short period of time. Then it's going to be handed over again to the enemy. Then we're out of here. God willing. Verse 11. Let's speak it. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. A smooth path. We're going to have a smooth path going across me. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Listen. Listen. We are in a time of the wait where everything is about the Father's business, not ours. Amen? It's about the Father's business. Be careful that you do not move out of that position. It could hurt you. Does everybody understand it? Why? It could hurt you financially. It could hurt you physically with sickness. It could hurt you. Be careful right now. Let God bring us across. Amen? Let him work and do what he needs to do. We're to follow. Amen? That's why he said, follow me. Don't try to lead God. Amen? Let him lead you and bring you across. Because there, remember he said, what was the whole desire? That they would find a land with what? Milk and honey. Blessings, abundance, amen? It's about to happen. It is about to happen, but we must wait. Everything's going to be turned around. And all kinds of things. Look, at there's going to be, why? Because there's going to be so many empty places, amen? Uh, there's going to be a lot of open media spots. There's going to be a lot, everybody's going to jail, man. <laughs> going to jail and we'll be able to go there and minister to them <laughs> hallelujah they're going to the jail of salvation they're going to do the jailhouse rock <laughs> hallelujah and we're going to be rocking on the rock of salvation amen get ready don't lose heart don't give up don't listen to what the world has to say Amen. We stand on what God says, what the Spirit says, and we're led in, by the Spirit. We are in the wait. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that you seal this revelation tonight to each and every one as we wait on you and watch your goodness be manifested in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah, stay dressed with the glory.